welcome to the video of my third attempt of propagating bias spikes. <sighs> Three times a charm, possibly. Just to make sure that this video isn't long-winded <laughs> because there's been quite some attempts, let's just say. But before I get there, I do want to put out that I cannot put a fire spike into a container with sphagnum moss. So that was one of the suggestions from a couple of years ago because A, I don't like to cut up a spike that I'm propagating seeing as I want as much energy reserves to be maintained for every single node that then the propagation might decide to send out. Because what I did my first year was to cut the spikes in half to get all the pieces, but at least save enough of the spike so that there's enough energy for the two or three nodes to see which one will propagate. So that suggestion is also not possible for me because I don't have a long container for an intact fire spike to lay down on a bed of sphagnum moss, which is also a great suggestion because I don't want to cut my fire spikes. Now, third time is a charm. Let me show you. Ta-da! <laughs> I have had so many notes on so many fire spikes in the past two and a half. Well, now this would be the third year. And all I have to show for is one successful growth. This last attempt came about because I was doing the fires propagation again in 2021. And as per usual, using my hob filter material, which is that white stuff that you see wrapped around the base of one of the nodes as the base in a clear cutoff soda bottle, as you see on the left example. And once again, I got little plants to grow out of the nodes. That's the easy part. Getting the little plants to grow out of the nodes, it's like, yay, this is gonna work. The trouble is trying to keep them from desiccating and make sure that they actually develop into a plant. So when I showed my 2021 attempt of the fire spike propagation, I got two suggestions and one was to put like gravel or something so that there's plenty of humidity around the base of a node. And that is what you see in the left example. And I always had that gravel filled with water just below the base of the node because I didn't want anything to rot out. Yes, now they're brown and crispy. <laughs> Trust me that while they were not brown and crispy, I was keeping that container nicely filled up. Michael McCarthy also had a suggestion to pot two spikes up into Akadama, which I did. And the reason I've got the spikes so low in the pot is because of a lack of humidity in my climate. For that reason, I thought, well, I'm going to double up on this and make sure that things, at least if they do progress, should they frazzle out, hey, I've given it a go. <laughs> but leaving it all lower in the pot has given me a lot more humidity around the base. Now, there were two nodes at the base. And you can see that in the example of potting it up as a terrestrial orchid with Akadama treating it like a seedling. Only one of them made it and progressed beyond the embryo stage, which most of the nodes already had. And that is why I wrapped the hob material around the upper nodes, because they too were nice and green and they had little plantlets growing, but I wanted to make sure that the humidity would be around the base so that the roots would grow. Because of course, in a dry climate, if you don't have humidity, you're dealing with a terrestrial orchid, those root nodes are not going to develop and progress any further the moment they're trying to grow because of, yeah, no humidity. That was my attempt. Epic fail, as you can see. But looking further into the pot here, <laughs> you can see that this second one didn't progress at all. It's gotten all crispy and yeah, that's a fail on that spike. So I have what could be two, considering this is seedling stage, but I, for the time being, I'm only considering it one. I have never lifted this pot up to see if I have any roots coming out of the base. Uh, no, nothing. So what I've been doing is making sure that the Akadama is always nice and damp, not sopping wet. Akadama being a very water retentive media, just keeping it damp is good enough for me. It also wicks a lot. So if I just target the water in one corner, letting it run out the holes a little bit, 
eventually it will wick itself into the direction of where the growths are. We are not out of the woods yet because I have absolutely no idea if I've got root growth, but this is the furthest I have ever gotten with a fires propagation experiment. I can say goodbye to this attempt. I am not going to try it again. <laughs> I have tried many different methods. If this little one grows on very, very well, fantastic. But in future, my spikes will go onto the compost pile. Right now, the single spike I have left on my fires has got two seed pods going, which is another option to propagate fires tancanvillier. I have very, very carefully applied some calcium and magnesium and seaweed at extremely low levels. 25 ppm of Calmag and and 25 ppm of seaweed. I've done that about twice since these have developed. I also have sprayed them with that insecticide because of the little mite infestation, saying it through clenched teeth, that I currently have in the area where they live. So I don't need any mites taking these leaves out because then that will be history for this little one. Removing this is going to be fabulous as I move into winter. Another bit of shelf real estate has been freed up for something that was going to need it come the winter months. And now I'm sort of toying with the idea of taking this bit off and we'll see how that goes. What I don't want to do is lose the support too quickly. That's for sure. Because if there's anything happening at the base, I'm not trying to remove the little seedling from the base of the spike, but you know, just tidy up the visual a little bit. <laughs> Look, I even had saran wrap at the base so that nothing would drip onto the little ones below that node. So I'm not trying to remove anything, snip it off, twist it off. I'm just gonna make this pot look a little bit more like <laughs> something that's not on the verge of going into the bin. And I don't want to be pulling that spike out because if there are any roots at the moment intertwined there that I cannot see, I don't want to jeopardize them. But yeah, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> we can preempt this one is going to be okay. I'm not 100% sure. Time will tell. But this is the furthest I've ever gotten with propagating a fire spike. So thank you very much, Michael McCarthy, for that suggestion with the Akadama. Fingers crossed. Maybe one day I've got a fire's tank and villia to give away. The next time that we see it, it's going to have doubled in size. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your time, your interest. Thank you for clicking on the video. Have yourself a beautiful day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.